Assalamu alaikum. Namaste. Ho tap. Shalom alaikum. Peace. This is Tracy Lene Muhammad, and I wanted a few minutes of your valuable and precious time to talk to you about the need to deal with your insecurities. Whatever it is that makes you insecure, the sooner you deal with it, the sooner you conquer that insecurity, the sooner you can live authentically 100% everything that you could think of. Not only will it come to you in time, you will enjoy it. As soon as you deal with those insecurities, the root of those insecurities, whatever they are, they're different from all of us, for all of us, then you will stop projecting onto others that which makes you insecure. I want to give you some examples of when you know a person is insecure. When somebody with a particular body type has to talk down about somebody with a different body type, there's some insecurity going on there. If you have to gossip, lie, cheat, steal, you are insecure. Your security is not there. And oftentimes, it's something that is so simple to fix, like just deciding to have self-worth. When you get into a relationship with someone else, that's when you can really see your full self. Relationships, marriage or committed relationships are this open space for you to start dealing with your shit because there's somebody else coming in your space who wants to love you and share life with you but you may be being difficult because you're insecure lots of times relationship insecurities show up and we check each other's phones or we're looking through emails we're without provocation and, and, and you know even if you think oh well they did it before well you have a choice you could leave or become so secure in yourself that you don't have to check behind somebody else. The Holy Quran makes it very plain and clear. It talks about the suspicion and spying is sin. It is a sin in most cases to spy or have suspicion on someone. And the reason why it's a sin is because of what it leads you to do. And I want to give you an example. So as a, as a woman, Oftentimes, we get in relationships with men that we know aren't the best for us. And then we're following them around town or checking their phones or calling up girls or looking through their Facebook. Your heart beats going like this while you're doing that. So guess what you're doing? You're speeding up your system. What's happening when you're doing that? The blood pressure raises. Um, the um, fight or flight raises. So you're hurting yourself. Your insecurity is causing you to hurt yourself. There have been people to literally have heart attacks from being so angry or being so, um, what's the word I'm looking for? When you're looking into something so full of suspicion and that they have had a heart attack because they put their system so high up. That insecurity, when, when you grow up in a home and your parents um, fought a lot. Uh, you probably aren't the most secure person. When you grow up in a home, or if you grew up and you didn't know one of your parents, you might have a lot of insecurities around abandonment, but you gotta deal with those. The bottom line is you can keep holding on to that story and tell that story to anybody who will listen. I used to do it. Anybody who would listen, oh, my mama got pregnant at 16 and my daddy wasn't in my life and I was raised by another man. I thought he was my dad till I was 14. Then I found out he wasn't, oh, woe is me. I have abandonment issues. I'm so insecure, all of that. I would tell it to anybody who would listen, but what I was doing also is I was attracting in situations in my life that would feed that insecurity and make it, yep, that's what, see, see, I knew this was going to happen because I'm so unworthy. I did all of that. And then one day I woke up and I decided I was worthy, just like that. I'm pretty sure it was <laughs> because of the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the teaching, the wisdom of the Tao and um, a lot of Buddha and a, and a lot of Christianity, just pushing it all together. Finally, I became aware of my self-worth. I decided that no, I will never be a size four and healthy. I could be a size four, but either I'm on crack or I'm about to die. Cause that's just not who I am. I'm five eight, and I'm a I'm a I'm a bigger built girl. Not that my bones are bigger, cause there's no such thing as big bones. That's 
bones are bones but the my genetic makeup makes me not to be tiny but I wanted to be tiny for so long that I went through bouts of bulimia where I would eat 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 and throw up or fast for weeks at a time and if you know me you know that I'm not making this up and I would get as small as I could and sometimes I would look sick but I just wanted to be thin because I was insecure about my size once I accepted what well, look eat really well get the exercise and love who you are well now the weight is shifting not just because because I'm also taking the proper foods in and and I'm doing the things I need to do mentally to keep myself from wanting foods that aren't good I'm dealing with my insecurities when you start to deal with your insecurities you might notice that your circle changes that's probably because when you especially if you start to deal with your insecurities and your circle isn't now I'm pretty blessed because I got a hella tribe and we're all tackling our insecurities and we do it together we're like you know what I'm not feeling like this anymore I feel like this or we're talking out when situations come up that bring up that insecurity like if you you get a trigger we talk about it we call each other lip you know I had this trigger and we work through it together and so what's happening is we're becoming secure together and when you're secure the world literally opens up to you when you decide that you are fucking amazing just because you made it through those four million sperms or however many it is and you're here when you do that the world opens up to you you start projecting your insecurities onto others <laughs> Lots of religious people are insecure because they have accepted a religion or say they've accepted a religion, but they're not really following it. So somebody who's not following it at all, who says, nope, this doesn't work for me, they hone in on them because they're insecure and they don't want to be seen. It's like you're throwing rocks to hide your own hands type of thing. When you become secure, you literally light up the room when you walk in it because you're so secure. I was at Taraji, my, my um, youngest daughter, um, uh, the ceremony from going from the fifth grade to the sixth grade was today. And there's one little girl in her school who is so amazing. I mean, she's just like a phenomenal little fifth grader. She's very secure, but her mother is very secure. I had the, the, the um, blessing of knowing her mother. Her mother is very secure. And so she passed it on to her child. So I asked myself, what did I pass on to my daughters? They have some secure places and they have some insecure places because of their mother. And their insecure places are right around their weight, just like their mother. They watched me yo-yo weight, gain, loss, gain, loss, gain, loss. Oh, I hate the way I look. Oh, I hate my thighs. And then they started doing it. But now I'm teaching them through example to accept your body for what it is and love every piece of it because it's getting you through life when I look at the, the, the secure places like my daughters are really secure spiritually because I am so my daughters will have sage and burn it in their room they'll talk about their tarot cards to their friends my daughters don't have that insecurity they want to wear their crystals because that's the secure that they security they see in me there were times in my marriage where I was very insecure and that insecurity caused lots of issues. You can say, well, I'm insecure because he did blah, 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 blah. No, he did blah, 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 blah. And you attracted blah, 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 blah because of your insecurities. That's why if you have 10 friends that are all married, everybody's going to go through something. But each of it is different because it each ties to that person's insecurity. So if one woman's insecurity is she, she um, is very jealous of other women, guarantee you in that man's life is gonna be a lot of women. Whether or not he succumbs to that, that's not the issue. The issue is they will exist because she has to deal with her insecurity about other women. When you are in a relationship and perhaps you had an alcoholic parent, so you are kind of, uh, skittish or your insecurity lies around being in a, a, a relationship with an alcoholic you probably are going to attract that when you become secure with yourself and secure with what you deserve because you'll think well i deserve an alcoholic and parents are alcoholics but when you become secure and you think nope 
this is what I deserve. You won't settle. You'll also recognize that people aren't perfect and you'll decide what you can deal with. When you're very secure, you won't care what other people think about what you're dealing with. You'll deal with what you deal with because it's you that is dealing with it. When you become secure, everything about you changes. Like you become so secure that, like I think I said this already, you walk in a room and all eyes are on you. Not because you're arrogant, but because your energy is so solid and everybody wants to know where can I get that at? Because at the end of the day, everybody wants to be secure. That's what we're looking for. Security equals love. Because love is the secure force. So when, I wanna go back to something because I, I thought about this earlier about how insecurity can kill you. Uh, it can short circuit your organs. So if you are in a relationship and you're very insecure and you're always checking behind the person, checking their Facebook, checking their cell phone, doing, you know, deciding that you're going to see what they're doing to you when really if they are uh, dishonest, they're just doing it to themselves. It doesn't affect you, especially if you don't know about it. When you find out about it, it affects you to the degree that you allow it to. So if you start to then look through their things, Check yourself the next time you're doing that. Your heart rate speeds up because you know you're doing something you're not supposed to do. So you're looking through their stuff and your heart rate is speeding up and it's just bounce, blah, 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 blah. And eventually a speed, sped up heart rate means your organs are working faster. And the faster they work, the more your blood pressure gets higher. So you can literally give yourself a stroke or a heart attack worrying about what somebody else is doing. Because you can make the choice to just fucking leave them alone. You really could. Oh, but I got children. Okay, well, you're still going to have children. And hopefully the two of you can either work through and, and heal and keep the relationship or you move on. But checking behind them, that's a waste of your life, a waste of your energy, make you look old. All of that stuff. So being insecure will take you down a path where the things that you really want in life can't find you. So get the security. If you are a really good singer, don't be insecure if somebody else is a good singer. You think you're the only person on the planet that can sing? No but you're the only person on the planet that can bring that melody the way you can through your experiences, through your voice. When, when I became secure, I started shedding all kind of shit. The biggest thing I shed was the body image that said, if you're not a size two, you ain't shit. You don't deserve to really have anything because you're not skinny. That's not everybody. Some people are happy. I, used to, I had a friend once. She had hips and a booty some big old boobies and a, and, and a little belly. We were at Howard. When I tell you this girl was so secure with her body and I'm running around eating celery and broccoli trying to make sure I don't gain too much weight and throwing up the celery and the broccoli and, and she's getting all the attention. I'm standing there going, hey, look at me. I have a flat stomach. And she's over and it's because she was secure with her body in her in what she was showing up in the world now I'm secure now but I, I hadn't always been that way And when I first started teaching yoga I was real insecure because I didn't feel like I fit the yoga teacher stereotype and it I was insecure but at the same time I knew I was good at it so I worked through that part of the body image but I overcompensated by being the best yoga teacher I could possibly be. I, would, I was over, and I still try to go over and beyond, but I'm doing it now from a space of self-love and not a space of, I got to make you like me because I'm fat. And I'm not even fat, but I thought that I was. I'm going to lose a few more pounds because I'm 50, and I want to be around long. And the more weight on your body, the more your organs have to work to sustain it. And I don't want my organs to have to do extra work, so I'll help them out a little bit. But that insecurity about it is over because I just decided to do the real work of why I felt so insecure in certain areas. And it all for me, everybody's different, it all for me went back to that womb experience of being in a womb of a 17 year old, 16 year old, had me when she was 17 year old girl who was very intelligent and had so much going on that this was a stop to all of her plans. I took all that on. She never gave me that. I took it on. I, I decided that this is what I'm going to take on. Yeah, she wasn't happy being pregnant that young, but I guess I can understand it now. But those insecurities really followed me for a long time. 
And even, let me tell you, the biggest insecurity I had was I'm 50. And now I'm awake. And now I love myself. And now I want to have all this stuff. Oh shit, it's too late. I'm 50. What if I die? You know, I, I mean, I thought, damn, even if I live to be 90, that's just 40 years. Oh my God, I, was so, I missed so much time. I, I had to let go of that insecurity too. I used to be insecure when I would go into Raji's classroom because I have an 11 year old. And I'm like, oh God, you know, I was 48 the last time I had that insecurity. And I was at the store and this woman says, oh, you got your grandbabies with you. I wasn't happy with that. I actually was younger than 40 because Taraji was little and I, and I had Aline Mazana and um, Majid with me, my, my oldest three. And I was, my, I was insecure thinking, oh my God, I, I waited to have children and now I'm going to be the old mom. But I, all of that stuff, I don't have anymore. I had to deal with those insecurities. Deal with your insecurities. Write them out. Don't be afraid of them. Now we have a new moon coming up. Oh, I'm sorry, a full moon. On my birthday, June 17th, you can write out all of your insecurities. Be honest with yourself. You might as well be honest with yourself. Write them all out and decide when this paper burn up, that's it. I'm done with that. And you have to work at it, of course. It's not like it's like that proverbial, you plant a seed, you don't get food that day. But if you nurture it and water it and love it and till the field, you will eat some good food in due time in its season so when you're insecure don't beat yourself up for being insecure decide I'm not gonna be this way I would suggest that every day you look in a full-length mirror butt-ass naked and say god damn that's some good-looking woman or man looking back at me learn to fall in love with yourself even if you want to lose some weight don't don't say that say look at this I'm gonna make this even healthier I'm gonna do the damn thing but don't make it negative but do that every day fall in love with yourself it is so interesting that many people who are very insecure are always looking for a relationship with somebody else to love them they don't love themselves self-love is the first thing I knew my dogs was gonna do that at some point because they don't think nobody should be able to come to their own houses they ain't in, they not bothering us they don't think people should be able to go home but that self-love comes from deciding that you're worth it that you're here so you beat out those four million sperm to get here you're here love yourself stand in front of a mirror and declare today buck naked that you are so amazing and worthy and beautiful on the 17th write out all those insecurities and burn them burn them get rid of them decide that you have spent enough time worrying and being insecure about shit that you either can't change or can change but being too lazy to change if you're in a relationship and you got to check Facebook and cell phone and following people behind you are in the wrong relationship you are in the wrong relationship but if you don't work on you you're just gonna attract that in another person because it's really about you whatever is happening in your life is about you your insecurity is bringing those things to you. I don't know if I said this earlier about how the Holy Quran talks about that suspicion and spying. That's sin. And it's sin in a way of it's going to hurt you. It said the wages of sin is death. Well, that's what's going to happen if you continue to <laughs> sneak behind people, looking for them, trying to find the dirt in somebody else. You're just hurting yourself. Your heart rate, everything is just rushing. You're in that fight or flight stage. Let them go. If you cannot trust them, let them go. But more than likely, if you stepped back and did the work on yourself, why you either attracted Mr. and Mrs. Insecurity or why you are projecting the insecurity on Mr. and Mrs., you will find that the relationship can heal itself. We don't own one another. People don't own people. Marriage is not slavery. Marriage is not, okay, now we marry, so I own you. You got to do everything I tell you to do or else. No, that's not marriage. That's bondage. And you really don't even want that anyway. Marriage is this space where two people, two single people decide to share their single lives together. It is not to become one. That's mathematically impossible in that sense. 
this is what I understand the two becoming one. You become sexually active and you have a baby. The two became the one, the baby. So that's what my two became one means because two people will never be one. Two people, and even if they say, well, it means that you all are going to be the same in Christ. So, you know, you're still your own self. You have a different DNA. But the two can come together and respect one another, love one another, cherish one another, and have a beautiful relationship. And especially if you refuse to see the, the downside of them, the shadow side, if you only look for the good in people, one of two things will happen. There will be so much good, that's all you see, or two, there won't be any good and they will be gone, period. Because all you see is good. So if your life is all about goodness, you won't recognize that. It's Pollyanna, but the shit works. I've tried it. I make it a point to only find the good in people. And I have to catch myself because I'm a Gemini and uh, yeah, we're very interesting. I'm a Gemini with a cancer rising, so yeah. <laughs> I can get on that judgmental train and get to going at people. I don't do that anymore though. I really don't. And I'm I'm getting so good at it that I catch myself before the thought even completely come out. But I'm also so in love with myself that I ain't got time to worry about nobody else because I'm all up on my own D. So I can't, I, I, I don't have time to be up on nobody else's. Well, I know that I have taken up 20 something minutes of your time. And if you've listened this far, I'm so grateful for you. I hope that you decide to like the video and I hope that you decide to subscribe to my channel because I'm gonna be doing this every single day until there are no days for me. That's my commitment to myself because I believe that each of us has a gift that we gift others when we just talk, when we just share, when we just decide, you know what? I was thinking about this the other day. I love Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson's a little bit older than me and she just put out a book about maybe four years ago talking about the stuff she went through back when she was young, much younger and I got mad because I said Janet if you had to put this shit out back when we were at the same age I would have grown with you I would have been able to understand the stuff that Janet is going through is the stuff I'm going through but no you want to wait till you damn near 60 and now you want to tell people how you have body image issues <laughs> I'm just joking I'm joking kind of I do think that when we're going through something, if we decide to share it with, with people, we'll, we'd be better off. Now, people say, don't be telling people all your business because they, they can't do shit to you because you, no matter what you tell somebody, they can't do anything to you without your permission. Now, I do believe that there is spiritual wickedness in high places and you can share too much and people can be sending out negative energy. But if you prayed up to your days up, if you got your head up high, if you got your dome of spiritual protection over you because you doing, you balancing your chakras, you doing all of the stuff, you saging yourself, you got whatever you use to get you clear, they can't do nothing with you. The weapon formed against you gonna turn back on them. My friend shared this with me. Uh, in a group chat that I'm in with a bunch of amazing sisters and she said and the thing said make sure that the weapon formed against you you didn't do it yourself because that's a lot of what we do we we form these weapons against ourselves by ourselves we, we dig you know uh, it just these things are coming to me the honorable Elijah Muhammad says we dig our graves with our own teeth meaning we eat all of the kind of bad food and then when it takes us out oh Lord why am I sick because you ate yourself sick so no weapon formed against you will prosper. You make sure that you're not 